If you have allergies, I have a really good protocol for you, especially if you have something called seasonal allergic rhinitis, which basically means you have pollen allergies. Every year, this pollen floats in the air, it gets into your sinuses, and you have all sorts of sinus mucus, congestion, sneezing, fatigue, et cetera, et cetera. Is there something natural that you can do to get rid of these allergies? And the answer is yes. But the first question, what is pollen? Pollen simply is produced by a flower, and it's involved in the reproductive system in a plant. Pollen or pollinization involves a male molecule connecting with a female molecule, uh, making things fertile to then generate and create seeds. And if you have an allergy to pollen, your body is rejecting pollen. And in that uh, rejection process, you have this whole series of immune reactions that involve the generation of histamines, which are mucus producing, they're fatigue poisons, and without getting too complex, they're basically trying to turn this pollen into something that is less harmful. So we can use this concept in developing a strategy that can be very effective. And so if your body is rejecting pollen, uh, the solution or the strategy would be to gradually expose the body to pollen starting at a very small level and then increasing this over time. So then the body will reject it less and less and less to the point where uh, you have no more allergies. Pollen is spread through the wind or through bees. And today we're going to talk about the remedy using something that bees have, which is called bee pollen. If you can find local bee pollen, that would be the best remedy. Because in bee pollen, you have a combination of a lot of different types of pollen and a lot of different flowers in your area. And by consuming this pollen, it goes into the system and it crosses the immune barrier in your intestines, getting the stamp of approval through immigration. So that way you're not bypassing that system like you would if you had an injection, which you could have a, a major reaction. But when it goes through normal digestion, you don't actually have a flare up. But some people may react to it if they're very, very allergic. So this is why we're going to recommend going very, very slow at first and then increasing the amount. But in bee pollen, you have not just pollen. You have a lot of other things. You have friendly microbes. You have at least 29 different types of bacteria. You have like 188 different types of fungi, which can actually help your immune system. You have all sorts of amino acids in bee pollen. You have vitamins and minerals and hormones. You even have essential fatty acids. And so bee pollen has some really cool effects, not just in allergies, but as a powerful anti-inflammatory. Uh, it's good to help heal a wound. And a more concentrated or a stronger version of bee pollen would be something called bee bread, in which case you would need lesser amounts because it's stronger. So if you're very, very sensitive, uh, you'd want to start out with maybe two or three small little grains of bee pollen um, per day, okay? And then each day you increase that over a period of a week or even longer till you build up to, you know, if you're an adult, between two to five teaspoons per day. If you're a child, you're taking between one and two teaspoons per day on an empty stomach. And you can take this total amount and kind of divide it up through the day. But realize you might not feel anything at first because you have to start building up this uh, tolerance inside your immune system. And so your body's doing all sorts of things behind the scene of developing um, antibodies and strengthening your immune system to the point where that allergy is less and less and less and less. Now, ideally, if you have this allergy, it'd probably be best to start this in the winter before the spring. So some people don't do that, but realize that that would be the best time to do it. And so you can do this cycle of taking bee pollen, you know, two or three times a year. Maybe you do it in the um, winter to spring and then maybe in the summer to fall. And you can also chew these grains uh, or you can grind them up to work a little bit better or just soak them in water and then drink them down. That way you extract all the pollen from these little um, chunks that they're in. Bee pollen is the number one remedy that I'm going to recommend. Number two, quercetin and onions are really good for allergies. They're a very potent antihistamine and an anti-inflammatory. So the more onions you can consume, the better. 
And then, of course, the last remedy is called stinging nettle, okay? Um, not just the stinging nettle root, but the whole plant. Now, you may even have this in your backyard growing wild. And if you do, I created a link down below of a great video to show how to consume it, okay? You don't want to necessarily have it raw. The best way to do it is to either uh, boil it or steam it or saute it or dry it out before consuming. And so I have a video on that. But if you don't have it in your backyard, you can just buy some as a supplement and start taking it. Stinging nettle is uh, really good for anything inflammation, allergies, and arthritis. And one last point about seasonal allergies. A lot of the reactions that occur with these histamines involve your liver. So if you are experiencing allergies and you're eating junk food or you're doing something to slow down the liver function like alcohol or anything that can inhibit liver function, you're going to find that these remedies probably won't work. So on that note, I think it would be very important to understand what would be the best thing to do to support liver function. And for that information, you need to watch this video right here.